Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel Hi Mathematics. Today we have very interesting and in the same way this very tricky exponential equation minus 3 to the x equal to 3. And a lot of students may be saying, hey mister, there is no way right here we have real number roots because there is like not possible thing right here. And I answer them, okay, I agree with you. But first of all, let's prove that right here we don't have real number roots. First of all, we can rewrite this expression in terms of log. So let's do this right now. So first of all, we can rewrite it as log right here here, base of, right here we have minus 3, right here we have 3, and equal to x. So in terms of log, we can easily rewrite this expression, but with one really interesting moment, x is ok on the right side, 3 is ok right here at this place, but minus 3 right here, this is very bad thing, because right here it cannot be, it cannot be negative, so this is not, not good. So it means that right here we don't have no no real roots, okay, no real roots. This is like a proof from school knowledge, this is a proof that right here we don't have real roots, but basically let's try to look at it from another perspective, let's try to look at it in the perspective of complex numbers. So this is our first method, I'm going to show you the two methods, how can we solve this question, so this is our first first method, how can we solve this question in terms of complex number, maybe we found real number roots, I don't know exactly, but let's do this. So the first method, how can we how can we solve this question? First of all, let's rewrite it. So right here, what do we have? We have minus 3, minus 3 to the power x is equal to, is equal to 3. So how can we solve this question? First of all, instead of this minus 3, let's write a product. So let's write it as minus 1 times 3, okay, to the power x is equal to is equal to 3. We can easily write it like that. This is our our product. And right now we need to know, we need to remember a really important math property. When we have a product in our parentheses and when we raise these to the power x, we need to raise each of these elements. So we need to raise a to this power and we need to raise b to this power power x. Right now let's apply this rule right here. So as a result what do we have? We have minus 1 to the power x times 3 to the power x, okay, 3 to the power x, and equal to, equal to 3. Really great. Right now, let's look closely at this minus 1 to the power x. I'm going to show you a really great, uh, really great identity. In terms of complex number, there is a great identity. This identity looks like that. When we have e to the power i pi plus 1, so this is equal to is equal to zero. This is our identity in terms of in terms of complex numbers. But when we uh, when we bring this one from our left side to right side, we will have really interesting expression. E to the power i pi is equal to minus minus one. Yeah, when we bring this when we bring this uh, one from our left side to right side, we will have really interesting identity. And this e to the power i pi is equal to minus 1, let's, 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 uh, so instead of this minus 1, let's write this expression, okay? So we have this equal to minus 1, so right now let's plug in this e to the power i pi instead of this minus 1, let's see what will happen. Let's see what will happen, right here we have e to the power, e to the power i pi raised to the power, raised to the power x, okay? We have times 3 to the power x, times 3 to the power x, is equal to is equal to 3. So right now we have this type of expression and we have uh, this expression in terms of complex numbers because we have right here our our e. Okay, right now a really interesting property from school right here we need it. Uh, we have right here a to the power x raised to the power y. We will have like a to the power x times y. So we need to multiply our our powers. As a result what do we have? e to the power i pi x i times pi n times x, uh, times 3 to the x, times 3 to the x, is equal to, is equal to 3. Okay, right now let's try to solve this question. How can we solve it? Of course, let's apply natural log on both sides. Okay, let's apply natural log, doesn't matter log, what do you prefer, this is up to you. Okay, natural log on both sides, natural log on the, on the left side, e to the power i pi x, times 3 to the power x and applying of course on the on the right side natural log natural log 3 okay right now a really important property one one more property when we have natural log of a times b this is equal to natural log a plus natural log b okay this is basic log property when we have multiplication it goes to addition when we have uh, subtraction it goes to division so right now let's uh, keep in mind this is our a this is our b so as a result we have natural log of e to the power i pi x, okay, and we have plus natural log 
3 to the x equal to nature log nature log 3 really great right now basic school property basic identity uh, for basic formula from school this is like the main log property when we have for example natural log a right here we have b we can easily uh, write this b in front of this natural log a okay so b natural log a i write these old properties i i think that a lot of you know these type of properties but maybe a lot of students watch my video so i want to solve this step by step which a property which is explained which with uh, with explanation to each of these steps okay well, let's apply this property so we have natural log e to the power i pi x this i pi x we can write in front of this so we have i pi x times natural log e plus we have x natural log 3 equal to natural log nature log 3 really great right now let's try to simplify this a little bit let's try to simplify this nature log e equal to 1 okay first of all this one equal to 1 so nature log e equal to 1 and as a result what do we have we have i pi x so we have i pi x i pi x plus x nature log 3 equal to nature log 3 Right now, we have x right here, x right here. Let's factor this x. Let's do this right now. So as a result, what do we have? x inside parentheses. We have i pi, i pi, and plus nature log 3, plus nature log 3, equal to natural log, nature log 3. Okay? And the final tricky move, let's divide both sides by this expression. So we will have our, our final answer. So x is equal to nature log 3, and dividing by i pi plus nature log 3, i pi, plus natural log, natural log 3. This is our, our complex solution because we solved it in terms of E, in terms of complex numbers. And right now, as I mm, give you uh, information in the beginning of the video, I will solve this question according to a second method. This is our, this is our first method. Right now, I'm going to show this, uh, how can we solve this question according to a, a second method. So let's do this right now. Okay, so the second method, this is our question, minus 3 to the x equal to 3. And right now, let's try to simplify this. Let's try to solve this question according to a second method. The first step is absolutely the same as the previous one. So we have minus 3, we will write it as a product. So let's solve it. So we have right here, minus 1 times 3 to the power x is equal to 3. And we already know that we have right here complex solutions, complex roots. So right now let's try to write this expression. So i square, these are a complex unit. And from school you need to know that i square is equal to minus 1. This is like the main identity in terms of complex numbers. So i square is equal to minus 1. But minus 1 we have right here. So let's write this i square instead of this minus 1. Let's see what will happen. So first of all we have i square times 3 to the power x is equal to is equal to 3 okay right now the the same property as before as i as i told before we need to raise this i square to the power x and 3 to the power x let's do this right now so we have i square we're gonna raise these to the power x or let's multiply okay let's let's solve it in another way we will have like 3 i square let's write it like that 3 i square we raise this to the power x equal to 3. Let's solve it in a different way. So we have 3 i square equal to s to the power x equal to 3. And right now let's apply log on both sides. Let's let's use for example log, not like natural log, but but log. Okay, as a result we have log. Okay, log of this expression. So we have 3 i square raised to the power x equal to equal to log 3. Okay, log log 3 and right now mm, and right now this x can be written in front of this in front of this log it simplifies us a lot so we have x times log log 3i square okay log times uh, log 3i uh, square let's yeah equal to log log 3 okay so we hope you understand this step i uh, wrote these uh, properties in the beginning so i don't need this i don't want to write this property once more this x we will write in front of it and we have we have a product right here and as i told before a product can be changed by addition in terms of log okay so we can write it as we can write it as x times log log 3 plus log i square plus log i square so in our mind in our just keep in mind that we need to split these two two expressions okay and equal to log log 3. These two will come down right here. This is the power of e. This is our i square. So as a result, we have x times log 3 plus 2 log i to log i and equal to log 
Xbox 3. Right now, this is a constant, this is also a constant in terms of complex number, but that doesn't matter, this is a constant, so the final tricky move, we're going to divide both sides by this, by this parenthesis. So as a result, we will have our answer in terms of second mass, so we have x equal to log 3, divided by this parenthesis, log 3, plus 2 log i. This is our second method, also a great method, so I hope you understand i hope you learn something new from this method and uh, i hope you understand my explanation two methods writing down in the comment section what method do you prefer the first one the second one uh, they are a little bit different yeah because uh, we solved this first question in terms of identity right here we solved this question according to um, according to a complex unit so this is up to you write uh, down into the comment section what do you think about these two methods and of course write your notes about this question what do you think about it it is also really great to see your respond down into the comment section to see your notes about this question because this is very very tricky question and this is not like the basic school question this is a tricky question with like in terms of like um, in terms of uh, complex numbers so right now we can see a graph i guess i can uh, find a, a graph to this question so we can see that we you can easily interpret this graph you can easily sketch it and we can easily see there's no points of intersection between these two these two lines so thank you everyone for your time write your question down into the comment section write your notes about this question and see you in the next videos have a great day